Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Episode 16. One, six. Uh, we were in Lithuania. We just came back over like two a week ago. Uh, yeah, a week and a half ago or so. And uh, we're back with the new uh, successful wealth and wellness talks that we're trying to mm -hmm. share what we experience and hopefully it's helpful for listeners out there mm -hmm. to run businesses or work in uh, organizations or just live a healthier, happier life. This is what we're all about. Yeah, hopefully some of what we say can help someone else. Yeah, and in today's episode, actually wanted to talk about Sometimes uh, we can run into difficult situations or times, mm -hmm. like even, and that can be uh, sometimes very evident, especially when you come back from vacation and then, you know, you're thrown into like your work and then you're like, oh my gosh, I just um, don't want to deal with some things, you know, and um, you get that um, emotion sometimes. So it's important for to distinguish that successful and wealthy and rich people and um, emotionally um, stable uh, people, we have as as those people, we would have to understand that we can't uh, run from issues. We can't because easy life will create um, more problems later on. So if we just understand that, okay, well, problems is actually a way of life, solving problems every day. That's what we get paid for. That's how we provide value to the world. And actually, that's how we grow personally as well. Mm -hmm. And that's just sometimes the nature of the business too, you know, from coming from the IT world, it's kind of just emergencies after emergencies sometimes. Yeah, so it is uh, the nature of a lot of mm -hmm. businesses and, you know, and it's kind of like in life people say sometimes choose your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, which heart do you choose? Yeah. I mean, because if you... Everything is difficult. Everything is difficult, but in a different way. Yeah. yeah. Like is being in IT and uh, solving certain, these bugs, you know, constantly that show mm -hmm. up on the apps and computers. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so frustrating. I could yeah. never want to deal with that. It, it's but there funny. Are people that yeah, do. You mentioned that because you know there's times when I'm sitting, you know, in front of my workstation for hours and hours and hours, and I'll look out the window and be like, oh, "Man, it must be nice to you know be able to work outside, or maybe if I worked outside all day." But you know, then I'll be driving to you know somewhere, and it's a hundred and something degrees outside, and you see contractors or construction workers working outside and and heat and dust and dirt and i'm like mm, okay may, maybe it's not too bad sitting behind a desk yeah maybe you know air conditioned environment um it's not that bad when you see people like sweating yeah. all day outside so but we as people we gravitate towards certain things and you know so like by saying choose your heart so i guess we would be the happiest that we are doing what that hard doesn't feel as hard to us per se. I mean, it's still hard, but it would be harder for a different type of personality, different type of person. So we have to remember that it's still going to be hard, but we have to determine, uh, okay, like, so what am I good at? And then things we're not good at, we should outsource to others. We should, um, to be more successful, you know, we, like, for example, I uh, wanted to always be an entrepreneur, well, a business owner or work for myself. I didn't know like what entrepreneurship really was. And, but I didn't know that there's going to be hard things. I only saw the good sides of it. Like mm -hmm. I didn't know the resilience that it takes, the patience, the uh, management skills, financial skills. There's so many, but you know, I chose my hard. That was hard for me that I wanted to pursue. And for some people, their hard is going every day on construction site and they would rather be doing that than dealing with you know, computers. Yeah, I mean, or management. You talk to someone that you know is maybe you know like a contractor or construction worker, and you're just like, wow, like man, that 
it's, you know, it's hard work, it's dusty, it's dirty, you know, sometimes. And it's like, well, how, how do you do it, you know, every day? And they're like, well, how do you, like, they're like, well, I can't imagine sitting in front of a computer for 10 hours a day. How do you do it? You know, yeah, and it's, exactly. it's um, sometimes too, when Yolita was just talking, I was thinking, you know, being an IT person and doing consulting, you know, clients need premise wiring, you know, wiring ran. And is it something that I can, I can do? Sure. Right. I mean, I can run cabling and every now and then I'll run one or two cables if it's something like immediate, but I'm like, you know what, I'm going to have, um, you know, the wiring contractor that I've worked with for 20 plus years. Cause I know I can just tell them, Hey, I need this, 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 and this, it needs to be done by that day. And here's the contact and they'll get it done. Right. And it's almost like when they're done, it's like artwork sometimes the way that they run these cables. Well, because people yeah, it's are what really they're good really good at, at you know, and, and they know how to do it, how to do it efficiently, too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you are sometimes fed up or down with some of the problems you have to deal at your job, you know, it's important to remember that everyone is going through something in a different capacity, mm -hmm. in a different way, you know, even that people do it very well, um, you know, chances they sometimes come upon some things that are hard. And that's normal. That's how we uh, become more patient, uh, better at what we do uh, by solving these problems. And mm -hmm. so to bring back to the first point, what when I when we started this podcast episode, you know, um, it's we no never want to run from problems because also you you will have more success and get paid more the more problems you solve. So the more problems you can solve, and for the more people you can solve those problems, the more you will get paid. For example, you know, like Jeff Bezos, he solved a problem of people getting items shipped to their home fast at low or no cost. Mm -hmm. And he sold that for millions of people. And that's why, you know, he's such a high valued um individual and that's like just one grand example but you know there's little examples even if you are like a self-employed um a, like independent contractor that solves certain problem for certain business or certain um industry you know um you you are going to be successful because you're being useful and you're solving the problem that mm -hmm. people pay you money that they want it Yep. They don't want to do that job. Really, you know, at the end of the day, it's like pretty much everybody is a problem solver in, in some capacity, right? Yes. You know, IT guy, you're fixing IT problems. You're a massage therapist, you're yeah. helping with low back pain, you know. Or any pain, yeah, you know, relaxation. We're, we're just doing a, a, a job at a, a bar in town and, you know, the, the bartender is problem solver, right? You know, yes. <laughs> some people get thirsty, you know, the, the pizza, the the pizza hut or the, the, the pizza that they make there is, you know, solving a problem. Yeah. People get hungry. Yeah. And one thing that I was just thinking of is, you know, problems are sometimes I kind of equate them to, you know, debt, right? So problems, you know, you incur, you keep incurring them and you kind of keep building up that debt. And sometimes, you know, just, you know, you have debt, right? But, you know, at some point you got to either pay that debt off or, you know, at least pay it down. And if any IT folks are listening, um, I'm sure everyone is well aware of what technical debt is. <laughs> well, uh, I won't bore anybody that doesn't yeah. know what it is. Maybe on another podcast. <laughs> I think I know, but I'm not going to go into it. Um, yeah, so um, that's the thing. And also what we noticed, or I've noticed over time, is that more rich, more successful people actually they they think about like how much many what is there other problems i can solve like what other services that my clients are missing how can i add value you know like and 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 uh, people that are not successful they shy to, shy away from these things they don't want to solve problems they want they they like are afraid of them and they just um you know they just want to do whatever and they're not providing value. So then, you know, you can't expect that universe is going to reward you with great things. Yeah, or sometimes people don't know just where to start. And, you know, one thing that they talk about a lot in like management and business classes is, you know, the individual that invented the, the lawn sprinkler. And essentially it was this, I think like younger kid, maybe 16, 17, 18, somewhere around there, that he was tired of his dad telling him to go out and water the lawn. So he's like, there's got to be a better way, right? So sometimes it's a problem. Sometimes it's just, you just don't, it's a problem that you're done dealing with, you know, that causes yeah. the innovation. Yeah, being creative mm -hmm. is one of the traits like for uh, being a successful entrepreneur, one of those things things um and resilience not mm -hmm. giving up you know if you don't succeed the first time you keep trying and mm -hmm. then um 
you know, having um, that vision that you have in implementing and having the discipline, that's the other thing. Like, yeah, solving problems also requires having discipline because sometimes like the first time in that might, it might not work out, you know, like even if you came up with that idea, you still have to bring it to the market. You have to pitch it to like the right manufacturers to like produce it. And then the stores to believe in you to buy that product, to believe that people will buy it. Um, and, and I think, you know, it's easy to get kind of stuck in a rut with seeing, you know, people that are maybe very successful because that that's what you see, right? Is them you being, see the tip of yeah, the Yeah, you very see, you know, um, I, there was a, a, a gentleman that we met a couple of times at different networking events where I can't remember, but it was like, you know, four or five kind of failed businesses. Maybe not failed is the right term, but, you know, started a business, didn't work out, started another one, didn't work out. You know, and he did that three or four times. And then he, you know, kind of finally found the right horse, so to speak. And, you know, now it's a very successful business. But I don't think people necessarily, if you don't really kind of talk to him and kind of hear his story, it's just like, oh, wow, he's got this really successful business. That must be really nice. But you don't realize, you know, all the pain and heartache and blood, sweat and tears that, you know, went into the other businesses that, you know, we that don't hear he about. learned. He yeah. built calluses from it. It's yeah. like lifting weights at the gym, you will build muscle over yeah. time. So it's the same like the resilience and um, business skills and, and, and people skills you learn over time as you try and you fail and you know that ways that didn't work so then you try different ways to find or you just understand the process better like you know i tried to launch a product that was going to be made and overseas and that kind of didn't work out so kind of pivoted to making it in the united states and kind of everything was really great and going well and then at the last minute that manufacturer kind of brought up a couple of things and then they were like well we need to kind of pivot so bounce to another manufacturer and then after all said and done it just kind of just didn't really work out in the end unfortunately but you know the the lessons and the knowledge learn from just all of that planning and talking with engineers and different manufacturers, you know, that's skills that you can translate into yeah. other things. It can come in handy. Mm -hmm. It's never like a loss. Even if you take a risk and you try, I mean, it has to be a calculated risk. Like you don't want it to just blindly, you know, gamble. Right. You don't want to crazy. jump off the high dive at the pool without making sure that there's water in it. Yeah. But, you know, maybe, you know, you kind of, peek over and I'm like, mm, I think there's enough, you know, yeah. and I'm willing to take that chance, you know? Yeah. Well, you have to, yeah, see the market, see what's happening like in, in that period of time and mm -hmm. see if it's worth it, but without, but that's the other thing, like successful people, you know, they solve problems, but they also take risks. Mm -hmm. Like nobody ever became successful with, without taking at least some level of risk. Mm -hmm. Like, Elon Musk like takes risk all the time, and even he failed so many times. Mm -hmm. um, I and just so many small and large entrepreneurs. I don't want to keep mentioning the same names, but there's every single one that you will talk to. They, they most likely will say, you know, yeah, you know, this happened. I tried this first. This this doesn't that didn't work out. Then I tried this one. And or you know, I bought this like dilapidated building. I renovated and I you know, lost create, my shirt on it. Yeah. And I like, and I put like the first store there and then it took off, you know, yeah. or like I bought equipment and like, for example, like, um, I know story of like Chobani yogurts, you know, mm -hmm. founder, like immigrant, he bought an old factory and then remodeled it. And, and now, you know, it's a very successful company, but you know, he had to take a risk. Um, so that is, um, way to only way really that i know that can shape your character to be a better leader to be um, a more successful person is to not shy away from problems and take calculated risks mm -hmm. the other thing like for example like we have a service so we serve massage and skincare customers but we also offer franchises so, so the way we solve problem for people is that want to own a business but need um to do it in a faster way. Like they don't want to spend years to have to figure out how the spa business works. Like they know they're ready to take a leap to be a business owner, but what buying into franchise allows them to do is they get policies, systems, processes, marketing support, which actually allows them to, it reduces that risk a little bit. It's still taking a risk. And for example, you know, having to quit their other job, it's going to be like a big leap, but buying into, yeah. right. But buying into franchise, 
it gives you like a helping hand mm -hmm. where you're not by yourself. You're in a business for yourself, but you're not by yourself. You have support, you have training. It's almost like, you know, to go back to what I said about the diving board and jumping out, you know, with a franchise, you know, you still want to look right before you jump, but you also have the franchisor, right? Did I say that yes. right? Yeah. You also have the franchisor on the side of the pool kind of being like, hey, yeah, the water actually looks nice. And you know what? I've got kind of a, a rope that I can throw you. You know, yeah. if you get a little stuck in the water or whatever, I can give you a right. hand to help pull you out. Um, yeah. One example that I just thought of too when we were talking is is look at sometimes problems as drivers to help motivate you in in, in your business. And uh, this one individual that essentially changed a, a, a sport for for the entire world. You know, he left with thirty pieces of product to go and sell the shops and things like that. And he came home with like 34 or 35 pieces of product. I'm like, how, how does that even work? You came back with more and he's like, returns. No, he was like, I went to these stores to try to sell them new products or get them to buy new products. And they're like, yeah, take this, this junk that you brought the last time. No one wants it, you know? And then that was like the motivator for him. That's like, okay, now it doesn't matter about the money. I'm going to prove people these shops wrong, you know? Well, then it became more about like the, the, the passion, culture yeah. and, and, and the value to the people, you know, mm -hmm. educating them. So, yeah. So, you know, um, like starting a business on your own, you need to have the resilience and those things. The same with, you know, buying, in a business that's like a franchise location as well will need the same still you'll need a resilience mm -hmm. not giving up uh leadership to your employees mm -hmm. and networking like adaptability you'll still need all these skills and financials you know understanding financials uh confidence you still need but you have like to say um training wheels like you know you're not learning to ride a bicycle by yourself mm -hmm. you have training wheels for a very low cost as yeah. opposed to how long it would take for you to um, to learn on your own. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, being in IT, which is, you know, kind of what I know the most, so to speak. But, it, it, you know, when you're trying to troubleshoot a problem, if there's no one to bounce ideas off of or just, hey, like, hey, can you just look at this and just give me another set of eyes on it? You know, it, sometimes problems become really daunting. And, you know, with a franchise, you know, you – if a problem, because there's going to be problems, right? It, 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 yeah, that's you know, why. Yeah, you know. Have so, to but you, okay, you, you know, you got a problem. You kind of try to figure it out, but then you have someone to call on the other end that has probably encountered that problem. Exactly. And be like, oh, hey, have you tried this, this, and this? Or you know, when it happened, you know, this, this, and this, and just gives you another perspective rather than just trying to be on your own. Yeah, and the confidence, you know, will grow uh, once you like overcame mm -hmm. one hurdle, one problem then you start to actually believe more in yourself and then, oh yeah, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like for example, when we got, when I first got my first employee, it was so scary, but the second one was less scary. Mm -hmm. You know, the same with first rental property. It was like, oh my gosh, like how are we going to like provide housing to other people? That's mm -hmm. like big responsibility. Uh, and you know, with time, you gain more confidence as you solve these problems and then you get feedback from other people too. It, it just reminds me of, uh, there was a commercial years ago of uh, a mom or a parent and, you know, the first, the first child, it's like, someone's like, oh, can I hold your, you know, child for a minute or whatever? And she's like, okay, well, you know, put on hand sanitizer, you know, a fresh t-shirt, you know, this and that, you know, and then it's like the second kid comes along and she's like, you know, some random person's like, hey, can I tell you? She's like, yeah, sure, here. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like after the first kid and we don't have children, but I've heard from, you know, a lot of people, it's like, you know, the first kid is really scary. The second kid is like, oh, okay, we know this. And then the third kid is like, yeah, whatever. Like, this is just normal now. Yeah. Yeah. The confidence, you know, comes and you know, the world will not end if you do make a mistake or something mm -hmm. goes all wrong. That's totally fine. You know, just, um, if you have the bigger why you're doing it, also having bigger why, having inspiration will help you to manage stress when these problems do happen. Mm -hmm. So remember why, why you are doing it. For example, I am doing it because I want to spread the message of wellness, massage, mm -hmm. relaxation, self-care, skincare. I'm passionate about providing that to more services, to, uh, to more people, more of these services to different towns, different areas, and also a good uh, place to work at for spa professionals. So that's why I'm passionate selling franchises as well that mm -hmm. has our um, processes and systems and helping people, you know, is the main um, motivating driver. So if you just realize people that mind or criticize you don't matter. 
You know, people that value your services are the ones that matter. Because they're also always going to be critics and people that maybe are a little jealous, you know, because you never see a more successful person criticizing someone that's trying to accomplish something. Um, it's usually the people that haven't done the thing you're trying to do that's criticizing you, whether it's out of fear that they think, you know, it's too dangerous or that they think that they can do it, they won't succeed at doing it, so they think you won't succeed at doing it or that you shouldn't do it. But it's important to follow your inner um, drive and calling, what is that you think will make you happy with, like, that least amount of pain, like, you know, like we talked at the beginning, for some people, like, there's more pain doing one thing than the other thing. And um, we have to find that. What is our joy? Mm -hmm. For one person is running a business is a joy. For other person, managing multi-businesses is a joy. For other person is being an employee is a joy. So we have to find um, what suits our personality better. Sometimes like... And what makes you happy, right? Yeah. You know, some people, like, they really like the stress and the hustle and, you know, being, you know working kind of 24-7. Other people are like, you know, it's not, it's not worth it. You know, I would rather maybe, you know, live closer to the ground type deal and, you know, spend more time with my family or more time doing a sport that I like, yeah. you know, you got to find what really makes, makes you, makes you tick. Yeah. And, you know, creating lifestyle yeah. that works for you. And, um, and that might not happen like at every season in your life. Like, for example, there might be a season where like you, okay, just started something. So obviously you're going to need to be putting a lot of time and effort during maybe that six months or 12 months until you get like the business off the ground. Mm -hmm. But also what separates successful and unsuccessful people is thinking long versus short term. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like thinking 10 year decades is what really will make you the most successful versus thinking next month, next week, tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you can get drunk and get happy tonight, but tomorrow you're going to have a headache. You know, yeah. that's not the most successful right. way of thinking. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to, you know, I think a lot of really successful people have, you know, they are able to be kind of visionaries to see what the market's going to do in years. And then, you know, sometimes they have it right. Sometimes they don't have it right, you know, and trying to, think about what people are going to want is kind of a, a, a neat thing to think about. And that's how a lot of people can be yeah, really successful by solving problems that people don't even know are problems. Yeah. And know? some, some people are better than others at it. But, mm -hmm. but the thing is, if you follow the system, it works. Like for example, for, um, for franchise us, you know, like we can't guarantee success for everyone. Like you still have to have resilience, confidence, people skills, financials. Mm -hmm. You have to have at least basic understanding of, you know, profit loss, things like that. But if you follow, it works. Mm -hmm. The same with like other things like solving uh, or starting other business, solving other problems. If, if other people have been able to accomplish it, why you can't? You can mm -hmm. if you don't give up, if you just keep at it you will be successful. And I always sometimes go back to, you know, t-shirts, underwear, socks, right? Like there's only really one way to make each one of those items, but look at how big the apparel industry is, you know, and you could buy a, a Hanes t-shirt for, I don't know, four or five bucks or whatever. If it says, you know, a, a certain brand name on it, it might be four or $500, you know? So it's a lot of time, it's just that innovation, making things that people don't know, that they want or need or the solving status yeah. or, price or you know, just kind of coming out with, you know, something that's maybe edgy and some weird colors or, or whatever. I, you know, I've noticed that the big baggy jeans are, are, are apparently Especially back in style. Especially in Europe. Yeah. You know, which is kind of funny because uh, this brand Janko, I think is how you pronounce it. J-N-C-O, you know, those big, big, that's what pants. my little nephew wanted. Yeah, these like jeans. I was wearing Janko jeans in middle school, you know, and my buddies and I probably looking back, it was probably like, wow, those weird, 80s, yeah. 90s, yeah. No, it wasn't that long ago, but you know, it, it was like, we just thought we were so cool and, and maybe we were, maybe we weren't, probably we weren't, we probably thought we were cooler than we are, but it's just kind of funny how, you know, that's not really anything new, these big baggy jeans just coming up. Yeah. It's just kind of. You know, I always say it's like fashion comes around, I don't know, every, I guess, 20, 30, 40 Couple years. Decades, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, if we had children, you know, Yolita and I are, maybe our kids would be like, 
we were your clothes from middle school or high yeah. school. It's, now they're cool, you know. Again. Right. Go to thrift they, stores. Go to Battery Street Jeans if it's still around in Burlington. Yes. Yeah.